Hey, it's Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are taking a look at the official exam guide on the Google Cloud website. Now, it's a bit different than other providers, which will give you a downloadable PDF, but uh, that's not what Google does. They just make it inline HTML. But before we do that, we're just gonna look at the exam overview. So here you can see where I grab those general percentages. It's a $100 registration fee, uh, 90 minutes. This is gonna vary based on your region probably, but I mean, I assume it's always showed up in USD dollars. They do have some recommended resources, um, which you can click through like these here, and they are terrible and they are not relevant to the exam. And I actually went through every single one of these because I thought that um, I might be missing out on some information. I'm gonna tell you, waste the time, don't do it. Um, I mean, like if you wanted to kind of get like indoctrinated into the way Google thinks about their products, sure. But I did not like them whatsoever. Uh, they're all available like to be a quick labs. Uh, there's probably Coursera courses, but the reason I make this course is because I don't want you to have to pay for something to get access to that. And that's the whole reason here. Um, now there are actually are, there are really good resources by uh, Google Cloud at, uh, or developer advocates and that's stuff that I do recommend, but this stuff absolutely not. But let's make our way over to the exam guide. Okay, and here it is, it's uh, pretty darn long. And so we'll just work our way down here and, and I'll just say like what I saw on the exam and what I didn't, okay? So at the top here, we have define basic cloud technology. So uh, know the difference between traditional infrastructure, public, private cloud. Yeah, I think I saw one or two questions on that where you had to choose between private or public cloud. Define cloud infrastructure ownership. So that's the, I don't know what that means. I assume that just means the shared responsibility model. Share responsibility model did not show up on my exam and neither on my uh, uh, support engineers. So, you know, that wasn't uh, very useful information. Essentially, uh, essential characteristics of cloud computing. Again, uh, I think actually I did see one. It was uh, like multi select, it was my only multi select one. So, yeah, I suppose you'd have to know that. Um, Google doesn't have like a official definition of characteristics of cloud computing like Azure and AWS does. So I kind of just provided one that was between the two of AWS and Azure, okay? Uh, no difference between uh, pass, infrastructure as service, software as a service, definitely saw questions on that. Describe the trade-offs between levels of management uh, flexibility when comparing cloud services. Didn't see any questions on that. Define the trade-offs between costs versus responsibility. Didn't see any questions on that either. Appropriate implementation alignment with given budget and resources. So there they might be talking about like different kinds of built-in cl uh, cl uh, cloud reports uh, or using budget alarms. So that was definitely on the exam. So you'd want to know that. Um, CAPEX and OPEX, total cost of owner, uh, operations. Okay, so AWS calls it total cost of um, ownership. I guess operations is what Google calls it. Never saw that in their documentation, by the way, but I included it because I assumed, you know, you need to know it. Uh, they don't ask that there. They might have had a, I think they had like a example of a CAPEX. So there was one for that. Um, recognize the relationship between the two, summarize the cost differences between cloud and on-premise uh, environments. Not necessarily a direct question to it, but a lot of questions revolve around migration or uh, you know, the difference between on-premise and cloud. So not necessarily call out to those questions, but part of a lot of questions, okay? Recognize uh, your or general Google Cloud knowledge, recognize how Google Cloud meets compliance requirements, locating current cloud, uh, Google Cloud compliance requirements, um, nope, never never had a question on that. Familiar with Compliance Report Manager, never had a question on that. Recognize the main elements of Google Cloud resource hierarchy. Uh, yeah, they actually had uh, quite a few questions on this and th these ones are hard. You know, I don't even know why they put this in at the uh, fundamental level, it just seems too hard, but I, I cover this in the course for sure. Uh, describe controlling and optimizing Google Cloud costs. So billing models, so that's the different built-in models or reports to find a consumption-based uh, uh, use model. So um, this is all like about billing, like sustainable, use, like sustained billing and on demand and uh, whether you use something that is um, uh, like you're using reserved compute, things like that. Uh, describe Google Cloud's uh, geographical segmentation strategy. This is what I was surprised about the most is that there was no global infrastructure questions on my exam whatsoever. Uh, and I always give a lot of attention to global infrastructure and networking because um, those are some of the hardest concepts to understand at the fundamental level, but they didn't have any questions whatsoever. Uh, they just focused a lot more on uh, resource hierarchies and uh, migration. Define Google Cloud support options. Uh, never ever saw a single question on support. Like, hey, what do you get if you get enterprise? No questions. Nothing on SLAs either. 
describe the benefits of uh, Google Cloud uh, VMs. Google, so uh, Compute Engine, VMware uh, Engine, Bare Metal, didn't have any questions on that. Com uh, custom versus standard sizing. Um, nope, free premium and custom service options, attached storage disk, preemptible v uh, VMs. Of course, you need to know what uh, preemptible VMs are, um, but like this stuff, not really, like there's no questions around bare metal. Identify and evaluate container-based compute options. So define the function of a container registry, distinguish between VMs, containers, Google, Kubernetes engine. Uh, no, not really. I think I might've had a one question about containers, uh, like to use Cloud Run. Identify and evaluate serverless compute options, define the function and use of App Engine. Yes, yeah, so I had a few questions on App Engine between the distinction of um, standard versus flexible. So you need to know those two different plans. Nothing on cloud functions. Define rational, rational for versioning uh, with serverless compute options. Didn't have a question on that. Cost and performance trade-offs uh, to scale to zero. Um, no, no questions on that. Identify and evaluate multiple data management offerings. So describe the difference between uh, Google Cloud's relational, non-relational database. Uh, yeah, I had quite a few questions on that. So uh, I saw all four of these options presented to me during questions. Describe Google Cloud's database offering and how they compare uh, commercials offering. Nothing on that. Distinguish uh, between ML AI offerings. I, I think they had like one question about ML and it was just like, what would you use to do vision? And it was like vision API, you know, that was it, okay? Uh, moving data around uh, between pipelines. Uh, yeah, there was a lot of questions about migration. So, you know, you had to know clearly the difference between these offerings here. Apply use case uh, to a high level Google Cloud architecture. So software development lifecycle never mentioned in the exams. Describe Google Cloud platform visibility and alert offerings. I, that's just like, billing alarms, budget alarms, whatever they call them. Describe solutions for migrating workloads. Lots of stuff on this, lots of stuff on migrate for Anthos, migrate to Compute Engine, something you need to know. Uh, down through networking, no networking in the uh, in the exam whatsoever, never ever. I don't even cover this in the course, I don't think SD-WAN, but it was not on the exam and I would not expect this on a fundamental certification, just makes no sense. Describe the best connectivity option between networking and security requirements. Um, so you should know like interconnect and then uh, establishing secure connections via via VPN. So those are pretty standard. Private Google access. Um, yeah, so that's just making sure that uh, you have an instance that doesn't go out to the internet. Uh, define identity and access features considering included. So cloud identity, uh, Google Cloud directory sync, uh, IAM, so all of those. So yeah, um, that gives you kind of an idea. Um, you know, I would say this is not very reflective of the actual exam. You know what I mean? Like I'd say like, you know, 60, 70% of the stuff I saw. Um, and I think maybe it's just that uh, it's still early days. And so if you're watching this from a year from now for my publish it, maybe they've made more questions, but I just think that you just don't have a very large question bank because when I had my support engineers take it, they're getting pretty much the same stuff as I was where, the, where there was like, why wasn't there any global infrastructure stuff? So, you know, um, I was very thorough in this course because I just did not know what I was gonna get and there was nobody else before me that made this course. Uh, so I just covered everything just in case. Uh, so if you're watching this from a year or two from now, you should be in very good shape because I was very thorough, okay?